Not all dogs go to heaven. <laughs> What's my line? We're the armed attorneys. We're on a mission to make life for the law-abiding gun owner just a little bit easier by sharing fast and factual gun law information. Today, we're talking about using a firearm in defense against an attacking dog. And stick around to the end for our pro tip about the most important consideration and whether police and prosecutors consider one of these type of defensive incidents is justified. But before we get rolling, show your support for the Second Amendment by hitting that like button. And to kick things off, we have a special guest appearance here by Edwin Walker. Edwin, when you're talking to your clients about defense against an attacking dog, uh, where do you start the conversation? Well, first of all, we want to say that everyone loves dogs. I love dogs. You love dogs. We all love dogs, but we all know that not all dogs go to heaven. And there are some dogs that are just bad dogs, and they will do harm to you, your family, and your pets. And so those are the dogs that we're specifically speaking about. Whenever people call me or ask me about attacking dogs, the first thing is, is that you have to be reasonable. Uh, your use of deadly force, especially with regard to firearms, you can only do it whenever it's absolutely necessary. Because in the event that you do shoot at a dog or shoot, or wind up actually shooting the dog, it is more likely that you'll be charged with a firearms offense rather than a cruelty to animal offense. Yeah, in most states, it's kind of a crazy deal, but a lot of states do not specify in their self-defense statutes when it comes to animals. We're typically left to, like for example, here in Texas, we're left to rely on the defense of necessity. And that means that the harm that we're preventing is outweighed by the harm that we're causing. So the harm that we're causing in this example would be discharging a firearm in public. And if you're out in a rural area, maybe the harm is smaller. Or if you're in an urban area, maybe the harm is greater. But in response, you know, they, they look and see what's on the other side of the equation, and that's the attacking dog. And since we don't have these self-defense statutes, it's kind of a balancing act, wouldn't you say, Edwin? Yes, absolutely. And so what you're going to have to do is make, a, make an inventory of the circumstances. Are there any other people around? Were others at risk of being hurt by your gunshot? Uh, was other people's property, such as their vehicles or their homes, at risk? Uh, those are the things that will go into a prosecutor's decision as to whether or not you shooting that gun was reasonable, or did you have an alternative? Like, could you have beat the dog off with a stick? Could you have run from the dog? Could you have jumped in the back of a pickup truck to get away from the dog? All of those are able to be explored because there's no stand your ground defense when it comes to an attacking dog. Yeah, and, and as far as self-defense incidents goes, uh, defending yourself against an attacking dog is probably the second most common type of scenario we find our clients in. And so if you're, you know, go on morning walks with your dog and maybe once or every two weeks you encounter a stray dog, a dog not on a leash, or a, maybe even an aggressive dog, your exposure or your chances of having to act in defense are so much higher. And you know, if the only tool in the tool belt is a hammer, everything looks like a nail. So having those alternatives, uh, maybe it's a club, maybe it's a walking stick, maybe it's a chemical spray, and that, assuming that's all legal in your state, you know, make sure you're, th you're following the law in your state. But if you think that you're going to find yourself in one of these scenarios, you really need to think about, you know, what are some possible alternatives? And I think that brings us to our attorney pro tip of the day, which is, you know, what is the most important consideration police and prosecutors are looking at when de determining whether this is animal cruelty or a justified defensive incident, Edward? You know, whenever it comes to dog attacks, size does matter. And so you want to make sure that you're not shooting a dog that's a small dog, a relatively harmless dog, you know, Chihuahua, Dachshund, Beagle, something like that. So make sure that in the event that you absolutely positively have to use your firearm against a dog, that it's a large dog that is known to do damage. A uh, dog, you know, in the 75 to 100 pound range, a pit bull mix, some sort of German shepherd, some sort of dog that is known to, uh, to cause injuries to persons and other animals. But we hope you enjoyed this discussion. If you did, consider subscribing and hitting that like button and help us fight the anti-2A algorithm by sharing this video. And we always enjoy your questions and comments in the section below. And until next time, we're the Armed Attorneys.